Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back again to the correct views. Yes, I still have my cold, and yes, um, I'm dying. But I'm going. Uh, I'm going to be gone much of this weekend, and um, I want to make sure that I get these posts up. I also want to tell everyone about uh, Media Speaks Saturday. Uh, I don't know what day. It clicks over to the 17th. What is tomorrow? That's great of me, isn't it? The 17th. Um, I will be out at 2 p.m. Media Speaks. Um, I work midnights. Give me a break. All right, people. Here we go. I also had to post today. I'm not feeling well or not because of the hostess. Did you hear about this? This is dreadful. Hostess has closed its doors, and I'm going to lay out to you exactly how this could have been prevented. One of the ways is uh, something I'm seeing on my Facebook page a lot, and that is getting rid of unions because unions suck. Yes and no. I mean, on one side, if you don't have unions, then what you have is a situation where Walmart exists where the employees have de absolutely deplorable working conditions to work under and they are basically beseeched by poverty. It's all they have. So in that aspect, you have to have somebody on the side of the workers because if you don't, then what you end up with is an awful situation. And then there's the other side. Unions could suck a vampire dry. I mean, they ask for insane amounts of money, and uh, in this instance, Hostess was already in bankruptcy, and what they wanted was the employees to take an 8% pay cut. Well, everything is going up, and again, you don't, you don't want the Walmart, Walmart hell existing. Here is the way that I would have handled this, and I've been told from Barb DeFora's page on Facebook that the uh, bankruptcy judges may not have allowed this to have occurred. And there might be part of the problem. Um, hear me out with this. This is what should have happened. If I was Mr. Hostess, this is what I would have done. I would have asked the unions for the absolute minimum that the employees would sign to on the condition that they wouldn't want another raise within the next five years. I'd be willing to go to three. Then, I would have given it to them. Lastly, I would have had a media blitz of massive proportions. And I would have told everybody that the price of a Twinkie is going up 25 cents, which is an awful lot of money for a Twinkie. I would have said that this is happening because we live in a world where things have not recovered since 08, and we at Hostess want to make sure that our employees have a high standard of living. I would talk about whatever insurance they get, I would say that the average Hostess employee makes this much money, and I would toot my own horn a little bit, and I would make myself sound like I am the most awesome American company ever. And then, if it didn't work, I would be bankrupt. Which is what happened when they did it their way. Anyhow, common sense, people, is the correct views. For those of you that don't know, one of the reasons it's named that is the view is never correct on the show. And I have found that the correct view is normally something that a child could figure out in many, many instances, and Hostess is one of them. Unfortunately, we don't have children running the CEO. We have people that are going to destroy a, an American institution. So I went out and bought a whole bunch of them. I don't know if there's GM in it. I do know that the sugar and the bleached flour, all that stuff has diabetes, cancer uh, written all over it. I mean, I limit it, but I mean, I got a whole bunch and it's going in the freezer. And um, another American institution gone. Now let's hope little Debbie is doing well. Um, this is There Will Be War in the Middle East, Michael Snyder, The Economic Collapse. I'm not going to 
go and uh, cause I know when I I know when I give you my point on this, somebody is gonna say, Well yeah, but before this and I, I, look. Nobody was shooting at anybody else for the last you know in terms of a large scale shooting from either country. I do not side with the Palestinians nor necessarily the Israelis. If I had to choose a side, I would say Israel is this little tiny nation surrounded by a bunch of people that won't get along with them because um, Islamist fundamentalists don't want to share the land with anyone. Read the Bible, people. You were both from the land. And now we got people on Israel's side, and I'm not blind to this. Like I said, I'm really uh, 55, 45 neutral on this. Uh, maybe a tad to Israel just because of the number of nations that pile up upon it. But I know that Israel is no saint, and I know that they do many, many things wrong, and I know that they are half of the problem here. Did you hear me say it? Okay. Because if this escalates, uh, this crisis that is going on in the Middle East, it will be, in my opinion, because of Hamas. And I am going to tell you why. Here are some of the most recent developments. Hamas has launched dozens of rockets into Israel since Saturday. If that sentence had said, Israel has launched dozens of rockets into Hamas since Saturday, I would have said Israel started it. The first thing to happen, Hamas has launched dozens of rockets into Israel since Saturday. At one point, the IDF estimated that at least 130 rockets had been fired from Gaza. Other estimates have put the number of rocket attacks much higher. In response, the IDF launched a military operation in Gaza on Wednesday. This involved the killing of the head of the military of Hamas, Ahmed Jabari, in an airstrike that was captured on video. Alright, let me tell you what. If me and my neighbor have been arguing for decades, decades, and I throw a brick through his window, and he comes over and kicks my ass, it's my fault. I don't want to hear that Israel and Palestine have been going back and forth. Hamas started this particular mess, and that's exactly what it is now. Now, who knows where it's going to go. Um... The IDF also attacked more than 20 underground rocket launchers in Gaza. The goal was to stop them from launching more rockets into Israel. Apparently, those rocket launchers were capable of hitting targets 25 miles over the border into Israel. So instead of sharing of the land, Palestinians, Jews, instead of sharing the land, what you're going to do is destroy the land build hate, more hate, in the land, and destroy the ancient monuments on both sides. We're talking about some real geniuses at work on both sides of this mess. In response to the Wednesday attacks by the IDF, a substantial number of rockets were filed for, fired from Gaza toward Israel. The IDF says that the Iron Dome missile's defense system was able to intercept 13 of the rockets. The IDF says that the military operations were conducted as part of a major offensive Wednesday and that the ground attack may also be coming. So now we got them sending troops in there to be blown up by roadside bombs. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Everyone? Yep. Let's keep going. Operation Pillar of Defense is the code name given to this campaign. The IDF is not taking any options off the table. That's just wonderful. That means anything. Um, all options on the table, if necessary, the IDF is ready to initiate a ground operation in Gaza. In particular, the IDF is being very open about the fact that top Hamas leaders will be targeted. 
which is what happens when you fire on someone, Hamas. Um, one top Hamas official, Khalil al hawa is very clear about his goal. Um, they say he has oh, uh, Israel has opened the gates of hell by being fired upon. The battle between us and the occupation is open, and it will only end with the liberation of Palestine and Jerusalem. No, it's going to end with a lot of dead Israelis and a lot of dead Palestinians, a lot of injured and maimed children, a lot of destroyed businesses, and a lot of hurt families. Take it from, Ameri from an American. Afghanistan. I mean, see, we don't learn our lesson either, so I mean, onwards you go. I don't, don't bother to pick up a newspaper. Um, Islamic Jihad has released a statement that is very critical of the IDF attack on Wednesday. Well, I imagine that it would be. Um, Egypt is saying that they're going to side with the Palestinians. So, I mean, I'm glad we got rid of Hosni Mubarak, because if bullets start flying, Egypt will be shooting at us, and no matter which side of this you're on, you really don't want Egyptians shooting at Americans if you're an American, now do you? This is going awful. Uh, Syrian rebels are receiving a massive influx of arms and resistance. And NATO, and they're never in any good, has announced that it is prepared to defend Turkey if necessary. Um, I guess that's kind of good because uh, Turkey uh, Turkey is like a country that tries very hard uh, officially to stay out of things. And the New World Order just sort of drags them right in. Tell Turkey there's new world, no New World Order once. Um, again, everyone knows a five-year-old knows the correct views, but they're not going to do it. Share the land is a ridiculous idea. Blow the land up, that is a good idea. Shows brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton, Ohio. I cannot say enough good things about their food. Their liquor wall is beautiful to look at and as delicious as you would expect. The Arcadia Grill at downtown Canton, please go there and tell them that the correct views sent you. That would help me immensely. Um, Arza Technica, how a Supreme Court ruling may stop you from reselling just about anything. On Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments in a case that pits a major textbook publisher against Susop Curtis. Uh, here we go again with my four names. Supop Kurt Essang, K-I-R-T-S-A-E-N-G, a student entrepreneur, oh it must be the devil then, who built a small business importing and selling textbooks. Um, the greed that is our educational system and the publishers of these books sell the books more expensive to America than it does to India or other countries. So this man started selling them from his country to poor American students. But see, you're not allowed to do that because then students don't take out as much student loans. And then if that happens, they're not hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And if that doesn't happen, then the banksters that run the New World Order don't have the ability to destroy their lives. So obviously, this soup hop man is the Satan that we've all been warned about. Because he actually is a free-minded, libertarian, entrepreneur, smart-thinking individual. And if this passes, they're going to say that this law applies to everything. And what I say is that we just keep on selling. You want to sell something, you sell it. Sell it. You want to sell something, sell it. And, uh, you know, there's going to be fake accounts going up and people hiding what they're doing. And I'm in favor of all of it. Um, this is from... Uh, also, the economic collapse. What if we adopted a system where the banks did not create our money? This is great. I like this a lot. What if there was a financial system that would eliminate the need for the federal government to go into debt? 
That would eliminate the need for the Federal Reserve and that would end the practice of fractional reserve banking and that would dethrone the big banks. Would you be in favor of such a system? A surprising new IMF research paper titled The Chicago Plan Revisited, which does not mean the re-election of Obama, by Jaramura Beans and Michael Kumhoff is making waves in economic circles all over the globe. And I'm going to go on. The paper suggests that the world would be much better off if we adopted a system where the banks did not create our money. So instead of a system where money is only created when more debt is created, we would have a system of debt-free money that is created directly by national governments. There have been others that have suggested such a system before, but to have an IMF research paper actually recommend that such a system be adopted is a very big deal. And I think it is absolutely wonderful. It says there is a better alternative. National governments can directly issue debt-free currency into circulation. I'm going to read this paragraph, and it's from the IMF report. At the height of the Great Depression, a number of leading U.S. economists advanced a proposal for monetary reform that became known as the Chicago Plan. It, in, it envisioned a separation of the monetary and credit functions of the banking system by requiring 100% reserve backing for deposits. Irving Fisher, 1936, claimed that the following advantages were there for this plan. One, much better control over a major source of business cycle fluctuations. Sudden increases in contractions of bank credit supply created money. Two, a complete elimination of banking runs. That is a big deal. Ask any Spaniard right now. Three, dramatic reduction in the net public debt. Four, dramatic reduction in private debt as the money creation no longer requires a stimulation of debt creation. We study these claims by embedding a comprehensive and carefully collaborated model of the banking system in a DSGE model of the U.S. economy, and we find support for all of Fisher's claims. Why should we create our own money, it asks. <clears throat> I will tell you. That is a good question. It says, why would the sovereign governments ever have to borrow money anymore? That is another good question. Our current system is designed to enrich the banksters and get everyone else into debt. And is that not exactly what happened? Taking the creation of money away from the banksters would have had some tremendous advantages. And it goes on to mention a recent article by journalist Ambrose Evans Pritchard, which you are going to want to read. Look, people, this is the way to go here. I am delighted to hear something like this, and I hope more people get behind it. Please leave a comment about this. Don't just let it sit on my page. Please, please comment this. This is big. What do you think? I like it. I like it an awful lot. Um, the last thing I want to get to, this is from Mercola.com, Dr. Dr. Joseph Mercola. Why do supporters of genetically engineered foods insist on organics for their own families? Oh, but genetically modified food is healthy, remember? Never mind the tumors on all those rats. For those of you that aren't familiar with this topic, they are putting pesticides and toxins into your food, and by they, I mean Kellogg's and Coke and Pepsi. I'll name names. Um, if you don't believe me, look up GMO rats. I always say GMO rats before I do any of these stories. Over the past few years, an interesting pattern has emerged where political supporters of genetically engineered foods are feasting on organics while promoting unlabeled GE foods for everyone else. Most recently, Mother Jones discussed how presidential hopeful Mitt Romney, whose ties were dated, who ties to Monsanto go back to the late 70s when GE crops were still R&D phase, reportedly makes sure his own mills are nothing but organic. According to Pete Alexander of MSN Today, on Romney Air, or Hair Force One, as a writer Steve Holland liked to call it, Mitt Romney has his own gallery in full cabin, and while I've never been invited up front, Sources close to the campaign tell me the shelves are stocked with a wide variety of healthy fare. Kashi cereals, hummus, pita, as well as organic applesauce. 
everything's organic, I'm told, including the ingredients of Romney's favorite peanut butter and honey sandwiches. Even more interesting is his wife, Anne, as she credits organic foods and holistic medicine to turning her health around after she was diagnosed with MS in 98. Well, that's, that's amazing that, I mean, Obama doesn't eat this, supposedly. Um, all these people don't eat this stuff, but it's supposed to be safe. Romney won't eat it, but it's supposed to be safe. I remember on a Hannity once, I heard um, them saying that John Kerry threw his Wendy's away and he was doing a photo op with the sandwich. He wouldn't eat it. Why? Because the poison's for us, the unwashed masses, the people who are meant to die of liver cancer when they never drank like my dad did. You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Please donate if you can. I'm trying to buy a better computer to get my graphics back up. And your money is all I have to get it done. So if you like my work, please support me. Good night, God bless, and thanks for listening to The Correct Views.